So you want to be a hacker in 2025, right? This video is for anyone who wants to start hacking but hasn't taken the first step. I've been in this game for eight years, and if I had this roadmap back then, I would have saved myself a lot of time. The first thing I'd do if I was starting hacking in 2025, I'd go straight into learning networking basics. But not just any basics, networking from a hacker's perspective. I'd ask myself, how do protocols like TCP, DNS, and ARP actually work? What's going on when you open a website or ping a server? How do devices find each other on a network? How do firewalls, routers, and switches play into all this? Because here's the thing. If you don't understand how networks work, you won't understand how to break them. And I know some of you might be thinking, shouldn't I start with Linux? Look, that's not a bad idea. Linux is essential in the long run. But if I had to start from scratch, I'd still begin with networking. Why? Because networking is the battlefield. That's where most of the real action happens. Scanning, sniffing, spoofing, pivoting. It all lives on the network. When I first started, I skipped the deep networking stuff, and I paid for it. I wasted months just running tools without knowing what they were actually doing behind the scenes. If I had understood networking earlier, everything else would have made way more sense, and I would have leveled up much faster. All right, once you've got a solid grip on networking, the next move is Linux. And I'm not just talking about installing Kali and calling it a day. I mean really diving deep into Linux commands and the tools hackers use every day. Now I won't lie to you, this part is tough. It might take three months, maybe five months, maybe even years. But here's the plan. First, you learn the basic Linux commands, navigating the file system, managing processes, permissions, users, that kind of stuff. Then you move on to the tools. I know Linux and hacking tools aren't the same thing, but you're going to learn both. You'll be working with tools like Nmap, Metasploit, Wireshark, maybe even Burp Suite, though Burp might come later when you get into web hacking. And don't just stop at the popular tools. Explore what's out there. Dig into GitHub. There are tons of smaller tools built by real hackers, and those are gold. Be curious. Be hungry. And listen, I gotta say this. When I first started, I avoided using tools from GitHub because I was scared of being labeled a script kitty. I thought I had to build everything myself to be legit. But looking back, that mindset just slowed me down. You need to understand something. If you want to be a hacker, you have to explore what other hackers are creating. Use those tools, break them, study them, modify them. That's how you grow. Don't be scared of using scripts. Just make sure you're learning from them. Don't be a script kitty without the hacking knowledge. Be a learner first, always. All right. Now let's talk about choosing a specialization. This is probably the most important step. If I could go back and start fresh, I would pick a specialization from day one. Trust me, it would have made me a better hacker way faster. Instead, I tried to learn everything all at once, which isn't bad, but it's a lot more complicated and it takes a lot of time. So here's the deal. Pick what you want to focus on, like web hacking, network pen testing, mobile hacking, reverse engineering or malware analysis, and red teaming or social engineering. Pick one that excites you and go deep. I know you're probably thinking, but I want to learn all of them. I get it. But trust me, start with one. Once you get really good at one, you can move to the next. But first, eliminate what you don't want. For example, if mobile hacking isn't your thing, ditch it. If web hacking is what's calling you, then dedicate the next three to six months to it. Nothing else. If I had known this back then, it would have saved me years. I was going to tell you to learn a programming language before choosing your specialization, but here's the truth. Once you pick your path, you'll learn the languages you need along the way. For example, if you pick web hacking, you'll likely need to learn JavaScript. But let's talk about the languages you'll need in general to help you on your hacking journey. First up, Python. It's easy to learn and great for automation and scripting. Next, bash scripting. It's essential for working with Linux and making your workflow faster. Then, JavaScript. If you're going down the web hacking route, this is a must. And if you're diving deep into exploits, you might want to learn C++ and C, 
Those will help you with low-level exploitation. But here's the thing. The moment you specialize, you'll know exactly what languages you need. So don't stress about mastering every language up front. Focus on the basics and then go deep into the ones that matter for your chosen path. All right, now you're a hacker. You know what to do. But if you're not quite there yet, start by searching for vulnerabilities in the world. Use tools like Shodan to find exposed systems, then try to exploit them. See what happens. Don't overthink it. Just get your hands dirty. And if you're thinking about jumping into bug bounty, go ahead. That's a great way to practice and earn along the way. But here's the thing. Hacking isn't easy. It takes time. But once you really understand the systems, hacking becomes way easier, even if it still takes time to take down a system. But don't let that scare you. I don't want you to give up when it gets tough. If you stay consistent, put in the work every single day, and learn everything you can along the way, I promise you'll become the real deal, and you'll make all of us proud. Just remember this, never ever give up. One life, one shot, make it count.